Hello fellow crafters. I am here today to show you another way that you can create those uh, wood signs that have the last name and then the couple's first names um, on them. I know a lot of people use the bleed hack uh, that can be found uh, on YouTube or you know in some of the blogs and stuff, uh, all done in Cricut Design Space. But to me, that's just way too many steps. So I'm going to show you how you can do all of that in Inkscape, um, and it makes everything so much faster and easier. So I've got my Inkscape window open, and I'm going to come over here on the left, and I'm going to click on the text. And I'm going to pick a font for the last name, and I'm going to type that out. So here is what I'm going to use for the last name. And again, you can use any font. I'm just using this one because it's quick and handy. Uh, adjust it to the size that you want, and I'm going to make it 10 inches wide. Um, if you don't already have your... Um, Sorry, if you don't already have this locked, then it will uh, change your proportions. So make sure that your proportion lock is on, so that way when you change your width, it automatically changes your height. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and click on my text, and I'm going to go ahead and choose my text for the first names. And I love this font called Love Ya, and I'm going to type them. Whoops and make this a little bigger. But what's awesome about this font is it has a ton of extra characters, so I use um, main type to access those. So here I'm already on my Love Your Script, and I'm in my private use area. And I'm going to use this J, so I just right click it and tell it copy. Come over here, and I'm going to paste. And then I'm going to use, let's see, this N, so copy, paste, so then this E, copy, and paste. So this is what I want to use. I'm going to change my color just so we can see it. And I'm going to make it the same width as the last name, so that was 10. Alright, and because I'm kind of weird, um, and you can from here just choose both of these, come over to your align, and align horizontally and vertically. And yes, that does put it right in the middle, but I personally don't like where that's positioned, so I'm going to duplicate. Um, this font by using control D and I'm going to just type a few lowercase letters and I'm going to center that okay and then I'm going to make sure that's selected first because I have my aligning with first selected I'm going to select the names and I'm going to use this which is aligning the baseline of the text so that brings it down just a little bit. And so now I can get rid of that. And now I like the position of that a little bit better. So, so far all I've done is I have my text for the last name, my text for the first name with my little extra characters um, that I copied and pasted from main type, my font manager. So now what I have to do is take this part of the text and I have to make it a path. A path is what makes it into a, an SVG, a cut file. So I'm going to come over here to path, and you can do object to path. You can do the shortcut, control shift C. That's what I usually do. I use the shortcuts. So control shift C. So now it tells me it's a group. If you look down here at the bottom, I have a group. And I need to ungroup those. So over here is an ungroup option. It's also under Object, Ungroup, or the shortcut, Shift, Control, G. So now it's all ungrouped. You can see my different pieces. And then I want to weld or union. So that would either be Path, Union, or the shortcut is Control, a plus sign, a plus sign. So now, if I click on my nodes, you can see this is one single piece, kind of like welding it in Cricut Design Space. 
Okay, I'm going to do the same thing to the last name. I did my convert to path, ungroup, and weld. And so there's my last name. So to make that um, cutout, you know, what some of y'all are calling the knockout um, from the last name, I select the first name, which is on the top, and I'm going to go to path and linked offset. Okay? And you'll notice a little box comes up and there's this little diamond. I'm going to go ahead and change the color so we can see it. And then you just start dragging this. And you can make it as thick or as thin as you want. So I think I like it around there. And once you have it where you want it, you just need to convert that to a path. So again, object to path. Okay. While I still have that yellow layer selected, you can see here it's still yellow down here at the bottom. I'm going to hit my shift key and select the last name. And then I'm going to difference those. That means I'm going to slice the yellow out of the black. And then now I've got an outline around the first names um, to create that knockout effect. So you can see there. And then here's that background piece. So now all I have to do is save this, doing a file save as, and save it as an SVG, wherever it is that you want to save it to. Um, I, I usually save to Google Drive unless it's something that I'm just using for me and then I'll leave it here on my computer. And you can save it as an Inkscape SVG or a plain SVG. Um, the only difference is the Inkscape SVG uh, has some data that's stored with the file, but both open up in Cricut Design Space. And then you're ready to open it in Cricut Design Space, uh, size it to the size that you're wanting for your board, and then cutting it. So I hope that you find that this is so much easier than doing the bleed hack uh, all in Cricut Design Space. Inkscape is a free program. Uh, you can get it from inkscape.org, not .com. Um, and it's super easy and simple and makes stuff like this so much faster. Um, and then you can just upload, size, and cut. So I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Uh, if you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up just so I know that I'm helping someone out there. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those below in the comment section. Uh, otherwise, have a great day and happy crafting.